Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one laid out for you today. $2.3 trillion cryptocurrency market cap. That's a real number right there. And everything's green this morning. Listen to these headlines. A rapper cleans up on Coinbase stock. We're going to get into that. Grayscale does it again. Does what? Well, you'll find out. BIS has a meeting in June and it's to discuss green finance. The quantum financial system. It's got XRP written all over it. We're going to get into that. And guess what else? Facebook Diem. That's right. The old Libra token from Facebook is now called Diem. A temporary solution for what? Central bank digital currencies? <laughs> there is a big signal here for us on that one. Visa and the digital dollar project. I think you're going to be surprised what we got for you there. And don't forget, we're looking at near-term XRP $2 plus, but guess what else? $27, $50, and even more for XRP and beyond. Let's roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove. We're close to 60,000 followers on Twitter. Make sure you follow us there. There is a lot of news that we don't get to put into the videos, so make sure you follow us there to stay up on everything that's happening, as well as... What's going on right now in the cryptocurrency market? Look at here, $2.3 trillion, as we said in the opener, but we are looking at nothing but green here. Man, does that feel good for a change? <laughs> Let's just get right to it. XRP is $1.59 this morning. We're up 0.66 on the 24-hour and 31.30% on the seven-day. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ranging here. This is what we really want to pay attention to. 159 is where the price is. We are ranging between $1.55 and $1.61. I will point out we are going to hear from a very important technical analyst who is going to tell us about a massive resistance uh, point at a $1.65 price point area. We're going to want to pay attention to that. and You're going to want to hear what he says. It is powerful. So we're going to tune into that in just a few minutes here. Let's get down to the news, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, this is brought to you by Unstoppable Domains, everybody. Premium domains for sale, opening a new category this week for business. You will be able to get so many premium domains that you haven't had access to. This is an example of some that were available for week six. We are moving into week seven, so make sure you check all of these out. There's a link in the description for those opportunities. All right, now let's get right to it. This is another opportunity I wanted to share here, and this is from the artist Naz, calls himself the cryptocurrency Scarface after Coinbase investment pays off. Well, look how much it paid off. Uh, Nas invested between $100,000 and $500,000 through his company, Queensbridge Venture Partners, during an investment round in 2013. And it says he likely is referring to, because he rapped in a song, that he is Coinbase. And I'm not going to read the rest of it because it gets a little too crazy for youtube but not me but shout out to naz and jay-z and the rest of the crew there they know what's up these are real businessmen is what they are and they are capitalizing on what happened and that hundred to five hundred thousand dollar investment likely had a return somewhere in the 40 million dollar range for investing in coinbase the cryptocurrency exchange and that is remarkable uh to make those kind of gains when it goes public which is why i tell you about link to L-I-N-Q-T-O dot com. Go there, register, and if you do not meet the financial requirements to be an accredited investor, take the Series 65 test, which is Exam FX. I have a link for it in the top of the comment and description boxes. There's no more excuses, ladies and gentlemen, because let me hit you with these numbers. Coinbase was $32 buy-in on this platform. And when it went public... It went to $300, and it's still around that $300 price point. That's the kind of things you can make yourself available to if you pick the right products in this platform. I'm telling you, this is why I say this all the time. Empower you, yourself. 
take the test if you don't meet the financial requirements and you can have access to what so many people have had access to. And that is through the courtesy and the grace of Link2 and everybody there. I don't mind telling you because they are very serious in helping many people get into this area of investing that have never had access before. They do have a coupon code for that. And there are several people in the community that have told me they are in the process of passing that test. So, all right, here we go. XRP Crypto Wolf says Grayscale purchased another billion in BTC and other crypto. They're now holding $46.7 billion in cryptocurrency. Shout out to Barry Silver. This guy, I don't even know if this guy sleeps. Seriously. Now look at this. Let's move to an international level because this is a reminder here. What do we know about Ripple? Ripple has been pounding the ground because they are about going carbon net neutral, right? They're talking about being green and renewable sources, renewable energy, and all of these great things, which are fantastic. And I am a huge supporter of that idea of moving away from things that are absolutely bad on the you know economy and the, and the planet. So looking at this here, you see that there is a date from the Bank of International Settlements on the uh, 2nd of June through the 4th, and they will have Nobel laureates, policymakers, academics, CEOs, and other experts to find out how the financial sector can take immediate immediate action against climate-related financial risk, they are going to discuss green finance as much as anything else they're going to talk about. Now, that is massive. Now, some of you may know this and some of you may not, but there is a thing called the quantum financial system and it has been building a virtual private network for cross-border interbank payment systems, hashtag SIPS, C-I-P-S. It is a network based on sovereignty and commerce. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. I'm just going to read this here. The author recently outlined the primary components of a real finance reset, uh, details of which are behind this effort to include documentation, proof of its relevance and importance. I want to show you out of this is that there is a real agency for quantum network. It is a real real agency here. So the National Quantum Coordination Office, this is a very real thing and it may feel futuristic to you, but it is very real. And in my eyes, I can't see anything but here from DJ Peter Vass here who just kills it. And I just want to celebrate him. If you're not following or Bond Crypt here, excuse me. If you're not following Bond Crypt and DJ Peter Vass, you should be following both of them. But right here, this is incredible. Look at his tweet from Bond Crypt. Lots happening in the background with XRP. Attention to the sixth SEC meeting behind closed doors, which is coming up in just, what, three days, and that is referring to the Sunshine Act meetings where they discuss possible settlements on all the cases that the SEC has in front of it. I believe this will be Gary Gensler's one of his first, if not first, official meetings with the SEC as the new, new chair there. Regulatory clarity is on its way, and obviously utility is the new watermark for really what separates the space. If your asset doesn't have utility, you may want to rethink what you're doing here. Now, I can tell you uh, with that in mind that, you know, I'm not an XRP maxi, even though I primarily cover XRP on the channel. I am a utility maxi. And if your coin has a use case and utility, I am very much a big supporter of it, no matter what it is. QFS activated May 1st, 2020, or May 1st, 21, it says. So that is the quantum financial system activated. And I don't know what that really refers to there, other than maybe this department is taking some action on that part. But the other things I wanted to point out here is Revolut adding wallets for BTC and altcoins to soon be able to buy those assets and move them off of the platform where you cannot currently do that with PayPal or Venmo. And then we have Flare Networks to look forward to this summer. That is very, very exciting about Flare Networks. And then Talk of Codius never gone away. It is here and it is going to be profound because Stephen Thomas said just a couple days ago, we covered it over the weekend, that Codius is superior to Ethereum 1.0 and 2.0. 
and it is also superior to XRP Ledger hooks. So I think Stefan Thomas is very proud of this and what the impact will be. And he basically referenced that they needed interledger protocol to be adopted in mass for Codius to be able to serve in the function that it needs to and operate in a really, really amazing way. And it sounds like we got great things coming. But to get into the diagram that Bond Crypt is sharing here, you can see XRP at the center in the heart of so many things here. We see SBI, which is an early investor here. We see CGI, which we just covered news from the other day. R3, obviously, SBI, a big investor in Ripple and R3, an even bigger investor in R3 nowadays. And then we hear the W3C, which we know was gifted the interledger protocol from Ripple many, many years ago. It's all very exciting. And you can see this whole map here, how it lays out. And I'm not going to go through every single bit of it. But it just when you see the enormity like this and it's spread out, it really speaks to me how XRP really serves in my mind has always been like a back-end settlement tool, whether it's for the derivatives market or for the FX market and companies and things of that nature. I see this as a beautiful, beautiful diagram right here. I may even get it printed out, and like glossy it up and frame it. You know what I mean? It's that awesome. Shout out to Bond Crypt for that. But let's keep moving because we know that banks, and this is from Michael Val Five Links, Hall of Famer here, big banks see challenges, opportunities in central bank digital currencies. And it is true as for many rewards, they see the risk and as you should. But I will say it has been the, you know, the thorn in the side of crypto investors that banks have been moving what has appeared to be so slow in getting a central bank digital currency created, piloted and launched. We know that there are a couple areas that are further ahead, like China is further ahead with the digital yuan. We know that the Bahamas have released the Bahamian sand dollar and they've been doing great uh, test pilots with that. But let's take a look here because there is a bit of a reveal in this uh, article from another Hall of Famer here, XRP Crypto Wolf. Head economist Christian Catalini explained that the DM stablecoin is intended to be a stand-in for central bank digital currencies. Not a permanent solution, but a stand-in. Well, let's take a look at it. He says, during a conference appearance last week, head economist Christian Catalini explained that DM stablecoin project is a stand-in intended to be phased out when central banks launch their own digital currencies or CBDCs. How many times have we said on this channel that all of this unified framework and regulation that's going to come down the pipe is going to be kept in a fence? And inside of that fence or the boundaries of that field of play will be on the outskirts will be the stable coins or CBDCs from the central banks of the world. That's right. Digital government dollars, ladies and gentlemen, the on and off ramps to the major highway of cryptocurrency is going to be digital government dollars. And this cat right here, Mr. Catalini, is telling you that DM stablecoin from Facebook is a Band-Aid. Put a piece of gum on it. That's what we're talking about right here. And we see even further progress here from China Central Bank works with Ant Group and Tencent to develop further with the digital yuan. This is more pressure around the world to get the digital currencies built, designed, and implemented into the system. Looking here, we see Visa outlines five ways it is pushing into crypto. Now, I want you to take a look at this because I found this to be really, really interesting here. Helping you buy cryptocurrencies, helping you spend cryptocurrency, crypto in everyday finance, settlement of crypto, central bank digital currencies, which is big. And we've gone over this last weekend. Now, I want to say here that, you know, central bank digital currencies are going to be over time, right? It's not going to be next Tuesday. But 
listen, the U.S. dollar, if you haven't seen uh, this morning, has announced that they're doing a set of pilot projects to evaluate different central bank digital currency use cases. And it is a plans, a first five pilot projects test, just like we know that they have outlined five key points for uh, Visa and their approach. They are not the same five points. But what I wanted to show here is the coordinated effort between Visa and a digital dollar, because last year it was announced that Visa patent filing would allow central banks to mint digital fiat currencies using blockchain. Visa patent filing would allow central banks to mint digital fiat currencies using blockchain. Come on in. The filing, which was filed with the U.S. Patent Trademark Office in November, made public, uh, and this is of 2020, on Thursday, says that uh, the system would be able to mint digital fiat currency and keep a tally of all issuance on the blockchain managed by a central entity computer. The system would also remove physical cash from circulation. So this was 2020 when the article came out. It may have been November of 19 that they actually filed that patent. But here's what I wanted to show you as a visual diagram here. The U.S. Treasury and the Fed agree to print money. It goes out to the banking system. Consumers get money. Consumers spend money and use credit from Visa and MasterCard. They make payments for the things that they buy, and that money can be like a catch-all bucket in Visa and MasterCard, and that money can go in, that paper money is collected, albeit through the bank or through the Visa MasterCard payment system, which are two of the largest, if not largest, payment networks on the planet. Collecting these dollars can be going into the bucket and they can repatriate the U.S. paper dollars to digital dollars back to the Fed and so on and so on and so on, repatriating the U.S. dollar. That's what this is all about. And the more we see the admission here that Diem and Christian Catalini explains that the stablecoin is merely a band-aid or a stand-in until that government digital dollar is created tells me it's not going to be any other way. That unified framework that we're going to be looking at not too long from now is going to be unified because you're going to use a real government digital dollar to buy your crypto. Looking right here, we see DJ Peter Vass, who's a Hall of Famer. Ripple price snaps back to trend. XRP adds 48% as bulls target $2.50 in the near term. Well, guess what? I have a very important clip here from CoinsKid. If you're not following CoinsKid, I think you should. I'm going to play a quick clip here. And thank you to CoinsKid for your amazing insights, my friend. I mean, amazing insights, and I think everyone out here should watch this whole video, but I'm just going to give you a little one-minute shot or so here so you can hear the insights of Coins Kid yourself about where this price is actually going to go. Check it out. Again, if you can start to break that key level of resistance at 161, 165, around that sort of area, and you start to see XRP march on from that, then I do expect more upside and a full retracement to the all-time high there for XRP before continuation in this bull market on wave three. So that's it. That's basically XRP in a nutshell. So that's why we've got that future price prediction, and that's why you can see off this particular bull market and bear market, we laid it down, and a target was met bang on. You see how it corrected at that particular point, but that at that point... It it wasn't the end of the bull market it rolled back consolidated before an extension and that is where potentially those people that are laying down those price predictions of fifty dollars or hundred dollars plus or whatever that is where you could actually see that overextension because don't forget you're in a bull market and the end there the end game is that euphoric vertical like here that euphoric that euphoric vertical like that that's what's coming and that's what we've not experienced yet so that's why it's confidence to the fact that we're looking at continuation after this level of consolidation for xrp super super bullish on xrp always have been okay and we made videos when we first started making this channel saying that xrp was your buy and go to the beach uh, crypto project right here it's 
Well, how about that? You're buying Go to the Beach Crypto Project right here. Shout out to Coins Kid and all his positivity. And he does remind us that you could see some pullback at these areas of resistance if it doesn't find it and it go back and retest the next level lower. So keep these things in mind, right? You know, that this is not going to be just, you know, just straight up as the charts say. Like even if you look at here where you had the parabolic move, you see it goes up right and it comes back and then it goes up comes back and then drops back you know so you have some give and take even when you're in a parabolic move even right so keep these things in mind that there may be some retesting along the way and obviously none of this is financial advice from him or me but i just appreciate him sharing his insights and all of the technical analysts i consider them experts at this point they have been so remarkably spot on that um I don't think it's deniable. We can't deny it. And I think it's in our best interest to pay attention to what we're seeing here. So make sure you check all of that out. That's going to do it for me. By the way, I trust capital. You're worried about taxes. Contact CryptoTaxAudit.com. That is the best place for Clinton Donnelly to get a hold of you and let you know the best availability or the best project, not project, but the best program for you to sign up for. And I trust capital. It is the best crypto gold silver IRA on the planet. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. 27 bucks, 50 bucks, or 100 or more. I tell you what, I don't know what's going on, but maybe we should have the SEC sue a few more coins out here. That's all I know. <laughs> That's going to do it for me. I'll catch all of you on the next one.